come down here. Amen. Good morning. Happy Easter, everyone. There is a traditional Easter greeting that we all seem to give to one another in different churches across the globe. And it's when I say, Christ is risen, your response is? is That was pretty good. I don't even need to make you do that again. I'm Tracy Cox. I am the pastor here at First United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh, and I need to tell you my voice doesn't usually sound like this, but I also need to tell you that I am not contagious. It's a sinus infection. And, um, but along with that, in finding and you know, not feeling great about everything physically with myself, um, I became aware once again, one of the living stones that helps guide us and our living stones are around church here is our fifth living stone that says we respond to a rapidly changing world and culture by confronting injustice, practicing forgiveness, 
serving the vulnerable, and offering the hospitality of our hearts. And I will tell you that even though I am not contagious, um, there are many among us who are vulnerable, and when they hear a cough or somebody around them sneezes, it can be quite scary for them. And so I would call for us this Easter to remember, to be aware, to continue to serve the vulnerable among us. You don't have to look vulnerable to be vulnerable. Well, that was a long way to say I'm not contagious, but um, not many announcements today. I hope that many of you were able to participate in the pancake breakfast that was beforehand, but we also have a feast planned for after worship today in the gathering space where you can sign up to receive a name tag, but then also, um, there'll be some treats and some fellowship time and just some good ways to be able to do that. If you have signed up for a name tag, they are hanging in the hall uh, right across from where we hang up coats. And you can pick that up. There's baskets at each entrance where you can drop that, um, your name tag off, and then um, look for it the next Sunday when you get in. Or if you want to be really brave, you can take it home, only if you promise to bring it back the next week. Um, but it's a great name tag. And also, I see some faces out there that I perhaps haven't seen in a long time. We have some pew cards that you can find in the pews where this is some great place to have some um, connect information for that. And so you'll see that there's a, a prayer request card that you can put out some information. And then there's also, um, we're glad you're here for those first-time guests. Um, give us give us your um, connect information. If you've been here coming for a while and you know some of the things in the ministries that you want to be a part of, we'll get put that name in here. And there's also um, a scan, a QR code to connect online with some things. And if you fill out any of these cards, just put that in the offering plate when it goes by a little bit later today so that we can get all that information. So I say these final words of, of welcome as we... Um, as we prepare our hearts for Easter worship. We're so glad that you've chosen to worship with us today on this Easter. We hope that you will find love and compassion in this community and that your time here will be deep and meaningful. We believe that God's grace is present in all people. We intentionally seek openly and fully to include all persons, regardless of age, race, ethnicity, immigration status, disability, sex, gender identity or expression, economic condition. We commit ourselves to be ministry for and with all people, regardless of their spiritual path or political perspective and independent of society's regard. God blesses us all so that together we can be God's instruments of blessing in the world. Christ is risen. Here at First Church, we prepare our hearts for worship by centering ourselves in the room. As we do that, as we anticipate singing our first hymn today, and I know you're, you're looking ahead at that with anticipation, we'll be doing f the first four verses of the first hymn, just the first four verses. But I invite you into the journey, the end of the journey of Lent, where we explored the embracing the beautiful darkness. And so I invite you into that space as we start our Easter worship today.
Good morning, all. My name is Olivia Migliori, and I have been a part of First United Methodist Church here for about six years. Um, if this is your first time with us, welcome. Uh, you've picked a great Sunday to be here. Um, and uh, I'm going to invite you all to participate in the call of worship. I will be reading the parts in the regular typeface, and if you would all join me uh, in the bold typeface. So please rise in body or in spirit and join me in the call to worship. Shake off your grave clothes of despair. Christ rises in the lives of those who live like Jesus. Challenge state sanctioned violence. Christ rises in the lives of those who love like Jesus. Among death dealing systems, we follow Christ, your living and Christ is risen. Christ is risen.
The sun rises, the moon rises, you rise every morning. In what ways do you rise inside, inwardly? How do you rise? Uh, that is our anthem for today. invite the young folk in the room, uh, young at heart, <laughs> youth, um, <laughs> families, anyone is invited to come up for our family time and with Joe. Um, and so I invite you to do that as the choir is uh, leaving their spaces for the moment. Um, please feel free to come up if you're young. Happy Easter! Christ is risen. Oh, you guys, you didn't practice. 
Okay, so here's the deal. When I say Christ is risen, you say, what do they say? Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Can you say that? Okay, let's try it. Ready? One, two, three. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. There you go. That's good. You all look so beautiful today. You have your, your fancy Easter outfits on. I wore a tie. I wear a tie only um, I wear a tie when someone dies and when someone raises from the dead. Those are the two times that I wear a tie. Okay. So, six weeks ago, can you please get off there? Thank you. Six weeks ago, a long, long, long time ago, we took some words and we put those secret we put those secret words in a box, and then we screamed those secret words into the box. Do you remember that? I do. It's Holly. What is it? You can't say it. We put them in a box because you cannot say that secret word during Lent. But now, now, I'm going to hand it to Rudine because it's a... Now Lent is over. And so we've taken our secret words. Can you, can you stop? Please. You let me go. Thank you. We have taken our secret words and we put them in this box. And now it is time to get those words out. Are we ready? Cross your fingers, because we don't know what's in there. Because we, we all screamed our secret words in there, and we don't know what's going to come out when we open them. <laughs> me too, Owen. Me too. <laughs> oh! I'll teach you a new word. It's called anticlimax. <laughs> Alleluia! Alleluia! That's our secret words. So, because it's Easter, because Christ is risen, we get to say, Alleluia! All right, now, that's the good news. Here's the, here's the next bit of good news. Because it's Easter, we get to go back and sit with our families and enjoy Easter worship together in this room instead of doing just worship. So we are going to say a blessing. <laughs> you got it. We're going to say a blessing to the congregation, but it's not our normal one because we're not going anywhere, right? So we have a new one just for today. So we're going to say, we're going to say Christ is risen, and then they're going to respond. They'll figure out what to say. So can you guys try that? Can you say Christ is risen to them? All right. Wait, wait, wait. One, two, three. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's go back to our seats now. We have a beautiful mess for Tracy to walk on. <laughs> All I can say is the office is closed tomorrow on Monday, but when TK comes in on Tuesday, he's going to be so mad. It looks beautiful. That's how every church altar should look, I think. Well done, you all. Am I going to slip? Oh, no, I'm kidding. I was just kidding. Thank you. Thank you, young ones, for sealing those hallelujahs for us. And thank you for the great joy that you had in unsealing those hallelujahs that we can sing and say. Um, what a wonderful way.
to have Easter. During our prayer time that we've had during Lent, we've been praying through the colors. And each week of Lent, we prayed through a different color and we created this prayer wall that we have up on our altar rails. And I, to me, it is a symbol of how beautiful your prayers are when they come together and how our prayers create something beautiful in our world. Not only in our sanctuary, it does look better with the glitter and the confetti, but oh, the beautiful colors that we live in, the beautiful prayers that we pray for one another. I say that too, reminding us to remember so many folks and families, um, any sacred holiday, well, actually any special holiday for that matter for a family, um, oftentimes brings it with this very complex a set of emotions of joy and happiness and comfort, but then also some sadness and maybe some, some anger that comes with it. Let's remember our loved ones and our friends and our family that I'm not celebrating Easter with us this side of heaven. And that can be hard. But remember the prayers that we pray for each other and how much they sustain us and hold us. Amazing. We have two peace lilies in the sanctuary. The one in the white basket is from Paul Schrading's service. The one on the right-hand side is from Patty Steffi's service of life. The reminders are all around. It's beautiful. It's holy and it's sacred. Let us enter into a time of prayer together. And when that is over, we will pray the Lord's Prayer. You pray whatever version you want to pray and God lays upon your heart. But we do have the words to the Maori version of the Lord's Prayer in our bulletin, which I'll be leading. But um, you pray as God leads you. Let us join our hearts together. Gracious and loving Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day of Easter that sparkles and shines and has all the beauty of other sun that other Sundays don't. We thank you, God, that you've called us together at this moment, each one of us, for whatever reason. Whether we are new in town or whether we are staying with family who's having therapies or surgeries, or whether it's been a long time since we've stepped into this sanctuary, or perhaps we're in this sanctuary every week and have been for years. We are grateful that you've called us together to be a community that can be a community of welcome and of hope and of love and grace. But Lord, we do pray for our world. Just because Easter is here does not mean that the tragedies of the world stop and cease. We pray for our siblings, Lord, in Gaza who are trying to find food for their children, trying to find a good night's sleep. We pray, Lord, for those in Ukraine I have no words for prayers Lord Lord we pray for the leaders of nations that they might seek peace we pray for the leaders of this nation Lord we pray that we would find conversation for compromise and the good of all, not just a few. Lord, we pray for those who can't find their way home, for those who are lonely and discouraged, for those who are fearful, Lord, may Easter ring so loudly in our world and in our hearts that your love would be known. Help us to sing each note 
Help us to pray every word. Help us to look into our neighbor's eyes. Help us to be Easter people. Hear us, Almighty One, as we pray together. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice we follow by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trial too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen and amen. What is giving you life these days? What ordinary joy is creeping into your day? Where does beauty stop you in your tracks? Who delights you by their mere presence? We gather these offerings, dedicating them to all that we love. For Christ has come, not that we may have excess, but that we might live life abundantly.
Amidst the threats of the occupiers, Jesus was not deterred on his path of liberating love. So too may our upwelling of solidarity be steadfast and determined that there may be Easter life, glowing and free, for all beings everywhere. Amen. Please be seated for a reading from the Gospel of John. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? From whom, for whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where to they, you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God.
Nicole, thank you so much for singing, for offering your voice and your heart. Would you pray with me, please? On this Easter morning, let us look again at the lives we have been so generously given and let fall away the useless baggage that we carry. Old pains, old habits, old ways of seeing and feeling. And let us have the courage to begin again. Life is very short and we are no sooner here than it is time to depart again and we should use the full of the time that we still have. We don't realize all the good we can do. A kind, encouraging word or helping hand can bring many a person through dark valleys in their lives. We weren't put here to make money or to acquire status or reputation. We were sent here to search for the light of Easter in our hearts. And when we find it, we are meant to give it away generously. Amen and amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen I don't know if you know how powerful and wonderful that sounds to ears that are searching and looking for hope in this world. And we have it here on Easter. Easter is the core, the center, the heart of the Christian faith. And so today, we re-remember the earth-shattering, death-defying resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Easter is for everyone, all people of all time. Just as a quick side note, today, March 31st, is International Trans Day of Awareness. Easter is for everyone. Day of visibility. I apologize for getting that wrong. But Easter is for everyone. This day gives us hope that our lives will be better tomorrow because we have the opportunity to take courage and to be in this life. Easter proves that when truth, love, grace, and hope are crushed to the ground, that truth, love, and grace will rise again. You know, several weeks ago, Isla Jean Boggs read, Still I Rise. And when I think of the rising of truth and love and grace, I will forever hear Isla Jean's voice saying, Still I rise. Because today, on Easter, resistance has been given new hope and new meaning. In church, we hear the story again of that first Easter and how that day, when the sun rose like every other day before and every day since, this day, this sunrise, everything changed. Everything changed. I love the John text, that storytelling of Easter. Because a woman is the main character. That does not happen often in the scriptures. That a woman is the main character. And just because the woman's name is Mary does not mean that she was a prostitute. I'm not sure what this has to do with the Easter message, but I felt that it needed to be said. That perhaps can lead us to some questions for another day where why is it that women are labeled dirty as doing this when it was men with money that put them in a position so take the note of that. We'll talk about that later. But in the Gospel of John, the beautiful unspoken message that we observe is that Easter is for everyone is reinforced. Your gender doesn't matter. 
Your nationality doesn't matter. Your denomination doesn't matter. Your age doesn't matter. Your job doesn't matter. This story shows us that everyone, that every person can have a different response to the resurrection, and it's okay. Mary, that morning, had chosen to go with perhaps a basket or a bag of herbs and um, to, to prepare the Lord's body for, for burial because things were done so quickly. But when she approached the tomb where Jesus had been laid, even though she had been wondering who was, how she was going to roll the stone away so that she could get in, she noticed that the stone was not in front of the door and blocking her way. Now Mary doesn't go inside the tomb, but in, rather she goes back to her community to tell the boys what has happened. And so what do the disciples do? Well, of course, in two seconds flat, it's turned into a competition of who can run there the fastest to get to that tomb to see what's going on. And they race. And what Mary said was true. The stone had been rolled away. But when they both got there, they looked in. They looked in and they, and they saw that the linens were out of place. You know, their first question was, well, where's the body? Where's Jesus? The linens are out of place. And then Mary steps into the tomb. She looks in. She sees angels. And I do wonder, were those angels there when those first disciples looked into the tomb, but all they saw were the linens? <laughs> People see different things and believe what they see. But Mary has questions. What have they done to my Lord? Because Easter just wasn't for that first Easter folk. Easter is for all generations. It's pretty much the same question we can ask ourselves today. What have they done to my Lord? Many churches, many communities of faith have turned it into uh, Jesus into some type of superb hero of, of emotional healing, binding the words and so that, um, that, that we'd, our hearts are mended and bound together and that we can be whole and be healed. Or, you know, that it's become, Easter has become this thing where Jesus wasn't political at all. What have they done with my Lord? Well, Jesus wasn't political at all. Jesus, you know, disregard the fact that Jesus was living in a culture where the Romans were oppressing people right and left. And people were looking for liberation. What have they done with my Lord? There's a Bible that has an American flag on it, that has the Bill of Rights in it. What have they done with my Lord to make it something that Jesus was only here for America? What have they done with my Lord? Well, you know, it's real easy to, to say they. What have they done with my Lord? To point the finger at somebody else. But you know, Easter's not about them. Well, well, it is. Easter's about everybody. But Easter is about the folks at that first resurrection. And if you look around, Easter is about you and me. It's about us. It's about we. And about how we live this life being an Easter people. So the question we ought to be asking ourselves is, what have we done? to our Lord. Some may wonder what that question means. They may wonder how we're supposed to live into what the Lord requires of us. And to really examine our hearts to see what we have done with the resurrected one, with the Christ. How is it 
that we respond to injustice? How is it that we respond to impression? How is it that we can weave these ideas into our daily lives? The good news of Easter, if this beautiful news of Easter is that every day the sun comes up and we have another opportunity to be, to be in relationship with one another, to be in relationship with the Christ, with the Almighty. The good news of Easter is that we can ask the question again and again and again, what have they done with my Lord? And we take the next step. We ground ourselves in truth, in grace, in love, and in hope. Because Christ is risen. Amen. And amen. As we begin to prepare to sing our last hymn, I would invite the choir to come forward so you can help lead us in this Easter Uh, an invitation for everyone to come into the gathering space. I know there's a lot of us here. We can all fit. We can do it. We can do it. Um, Just to have some fellowship time together on this glorious day. 
Hear this blessing as we prepare to leave this, this time and this moment. Don't be fooled by the way we tell the story. Resurrection is rarely a swift occurrence. Just look to the forest floors or the pages of history and find the pace of sacred things. Trust the hidden work of God, quietly moving beneath the fractured and fissured surface, tending and holding, pruning and clarifying, undoing and recreating. If all is still quiet, take heart and remain. There is so much courage and hope that resist timelines compressed by technology and profit. There is so much power in refusing to rush or be rushed in righteous labors of reorienting and repair. May divine unfoldings be granted all the space they need. May the testimony of freshly budding things strengthen and inspire us. May the wisdom of generations be our teachers, our anchors, our comfort. Christ is risen.